How are we going everybody? Well, today I've been planting my spring veggies. That's right, sort of getting stuck into it rather than just doing one here and one there. I've worked these beds out with these are the ones we've uh, topped up again with our compost and planting mix and mulch on top. They're also irrigated beautifully. If you haven't seen how we do it, watch one of our previous videos. You can scroll through them all. There's plenty there to watch. And what I've done here now so far, well, in this bed, I'm, I'm up to my third one in planting. I've pulled up all these uh, onions, self-germinated onions, all these little babies. They're gonna sit in a little bit of soil now. I've just gotta bring them on a little bit more. But what I've done is I've separated the larger ones and planted them here, about 10 centimeters apart. We do really well with our onions over here, so they grow really well, nice and big and juicy. And then I'm gonna start planting more leafy greens on this side. Now, if you're looking at the structure of this raised bed, and for anybody who wants to build a raised bed, uh, always factor in which way the sun shines, where it's, it rises and where it falls. And when I first built these, that's facing north. Well, it's just a bit off north. North is more of this angle here, but they're, they're pretty much facing north, let's say. And I put this green up, to grow vines uh, like beans and uh, what else have I grown on here? Uh, perpetual spinach, I've actually trained it up there, and tomatoes. And it's all been good for the first few years because uh, we have had plenty of sunlight on the other side. But as you can see now from where you are, those conifers have grown tremendously well, which means they've grown at least another five, six metres. So what's happening now is we get the morning sun coming over, plenty of sunlight on this side of the wall, but then on the other side, we'd like it to get about two or three hours direct sunlight on the plants before the sun dips over the conifers, which means I can't grow capsicums on that side, eggplants on that side of the screen. So in hindsight, I should have put this screen on that boundary line and had all this exposed to the morning daylight sunlight. Never too late, but I'm not doing it now, <laughs> no. But what I have been doing now is planting out the beds like this. Now, I just want to run through and show you what I've done here. Along the middle, I've planted, uh, these are beans, and I've got my label here, Kentucky Wonder, climbing beans along this section here. So each little hole, I've added three beans. Not two, I've gone with the three, and there's 11 in a row there so that means 33 beans to grow out of this now we're going to thin out the weaker ones and still we'll probably have at least 20 bean plants growing up on this wall and we expect it to be really well in the know lots of you've already got beans growing and you've probably harvested twice as you've seen with andrea's place totally different climate out here so you've got to factor in this type of weather we're experiencing so they're the beans now i've put a little row of uh, cos lettuce on this side here and then i've planted one of these from renaissance herbs this is a chili seven seven pod yellow it's called so uh, as a rating of uh heat it's a uh, 10 plus i think the guy's about 13 or 14 on the card that is so that's an extreme yellow and it looks like a little uh what does that look like like a habanero, it must be really hot. What you're looking at here is celery. Now this got scorched by the heat wave we had the other day. They were still in their punnets and it basically cooked in the high hot winds, cooked the top leaves off. I can cut them off and I will. I prefer to use a secateur, but look down below. We've got some growth coming on already. So these are strong and healthy. Even this one here looks like it's dying, but right at the bottom there, it's bursting up with life. So give it a couple of weeks, these things will double in size. Now normally I plant about 100 tomatoes in a row and that's how I like doing it but this year I'm going to go with a solitaire tomato on its own. It's going to have solitary confinement from all the other tomato plants apart from each other. So we're going to grow one and you guessed it, big malacca here. And I've got the pot again and for those who don't remember what goes on with this pot, this is a pot that we keep filling up with soil and we've got some mulch in here as well. So don't just put soil, put a layer of mulch and very fine layer, that's all I've done here. And then we'll top some soil up, top up with some soil up to here. And as it grows further above, we'll fill it up to the top. And it's a good way to actually water your plant. Now it has a hole. So we've cut the bottom off the pot. And that way we can just push it into the ground like this. The roots are in the soil and we're gonna to top it up. And we expect to see new roots growing along the stem of the tomato, which makes it big and strong and healthy. Wondering what that is, that's a bit of uh, dusting sulfur. We're going to try that out this year rather than bluestone. Uh, and I think I'm going to go with the wettable sulfur. So it's a lot softer than the bluestone, no as near as acidic. And you can spray the entire plant, obviously not on the flowers. So you're going to be very cautious and very meticulous in how you spray your plants so you don't burn the flowers. 
and this stuff here is rocket. Now, with the heat wave we have, I'm expecting this to go straight to seed. So I'm gonna see very little leaves and just a lot of seeds coming up because it's gonna get lots of morning sun here. And that's what happens to these little plants. They bulk quite quickly. This is coriander and I'm allowing that go to seed. I'm gonna try and collect some of the seed there. Most of it will fall to the ground and we'll have more coriander growing on their own. That's the best way to do it, I reckon. And we've got parsley on here and I am doing a trial. So I just explained to you that I did the coriander the parsley but more importantly the rocket on that side but what we've done on this side because we expect these beans to grow pretty quickly we've got our leafy greens so we've got our lettuce here we've got a mixed uh, uh, butter sort of lettuce as well and some rocket as well on this side so hopefully these beans take off quick enough to create a little bit of shadow so when it gets really hot the lettuce leaf plants don't bolt and go to seed but rather form a nice big juicy head Oh, this one here. And I've done the same here, folks, with an array of veggies and flowers as well. I forgot to mention we've got petunias in here as well, and we've got a heap of leeks going on. So if you haven't planted your spring veggies, or you're thinking about planting some and it's uh, not enough in the garden and you want more in there, well, it's never too late, I reckon, especially with the cycle of weather. We haven't seen sun for about three days or four days. Even with that high, even with that high heat that we had, it was overcast continuously all day. So it's not a good thing for the plants because they need the direct sunlight. So if you're going to be planting, and I reckon our summer's going to get pretty hot as they, they're predicting, get your veggies in, keep going in there and continue planting. So continuous planting is a good way to do it because we're overhauling everything and slowly, slowly we're planting all the garden beds. So over the next three or four weeks, we should have all these garden beds planted and hopefully by late January, we're actually harvesting tomatoes because I've got some green ones. Check out our website, VasilisGarden.com. Our Christmas special is still running. Get an extra 20% off all the marked prices and use the coupon code word, Merry Christmas. Check out our website, me Vasili. That's my Desi.